Right, this uh, mini lecture is going to be about units of unsaturation and how we can take a molecular formula and figure out how many rings or double bonds might be present in that particular compound. All right, so let's start out how this works. Let's say we've got a compound and it's going to be C4H10. I'll just draw it out in a second. And if we draw the hydrogens on and we count the hydrogens, you'll see that that's a total of 10 hydrogens. So the formula for that compound would be C4H10. This is called a saturated compound because it has as many hydrogens as it could possibly have if it had four carbon atoms. And the, the formula we come up with for any saturated hydrocarbon is CnH2n plus 2. In this instance, n is 4, 2 times 4 plus 2 equals 10 giving us the formula for a saturated hydrocarbon. Well, let's see what happens, though, if we add a double bond into a compound. If we do that, we are now going to have this many hydrogens. 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2 equals 8. So this would be C4H8. What we can say from that is that by adding in a double bond, we have cost ourselves two hydrogens. So adding in a double bond to any saturated structure will end up costing two hydrogens to do so. Now if we turn this into a ring, that is we join one end to the other end, and we put number of hydrogens on here, The formula now becomes C4H8. So again, we see the same thing happening. Adding a ring into a compound or turning a compound into a ring will cost two hydrogens as well. So double bonds and rings cost two hydrogens each. We call these units of unsaturation degrees of unsaturations or double bond equivalents, where a double bond equivalent or a unit of unsaturation is equal to a double bond or a ring in a compound. So what that means is if a double bond and a ring each cost two hydrogens, it means we can come up with a formula that will allow us to calculate the number of double bond equivalents or units of unsaturation present in a compound. And that formula is as follows. Double bond equivalents is equal to the saturated hydrogens we would have if a compound was saturated, minus the actual hydrogens divided by 2. So let's do an example of this. Let's say we have a compound C8H5. And we want to figure out the number of double bond equivalents in that compound. What we would do first is figure out how many hydrogens it would have if it were saturated. And that's when we use this particular formula here. So we look at the number of hydrogen, sorry, the carbons it has, and then we figure out the hydrogens it would have if it were saturated. And that would be 8 times 2 plus 2, which would be 18. So this would have C8H18, 18 hydrogens if it were saturated. So the saturated hydrogens in this compound would be 18. The actual hydrogens are what we see there and that would be 14. So 18 minus 14 divided by 2 equals 2. So this compound would have two double bond equivalents. C8H14 could have two rings two double bonds, or one ring and one double bond. We don't know which, but that's what we've discovered from this formula. So summarizing again, what we do, we've got our formula. We figure out how many hydrogens it would have if it were saturated using CnH2n plus 2. This one came up to 18. 
we subtract from that the actual number of hydrogens we have in the compound, which was 14 in this case. 18 minus 14 divided by 2 came up with two double bond equivalents. Right, let's look at what happens now if we add in different heteroatoms, things like halogens, nitrogen, and oxygen. There's certain rules that are associated with these. So if we have a halogen, and let's uh, take this compound here, and we throw in a couple of halogen atoms, what you'll notice is that halogen atoms, because they only have one bond, take up the same number of bonds as hydrogens do. So if I've got this formula, which is C4 H8 ClF, it actually has the same number of, uh, takes up the same number of spaces as C4 H10 does. So what we can say is that for the number of halogens we have, we add in an equal number of hydrogen. So we add in one hydrogen for each halogen that's present in the compound. Now let me show you an example of that. An example would be C4 H4 Cl2. And let's say we wanted to figure out the number of double bond equivalents present in that compound. Here's what we would do. We take C4 H4 Cl2 we'd figure out how many hydrogens that was actually equal to. That would be C4H6. And what I did here was I added one hydrogen for each halogen present. The next thing I'd want to do is figure out how many hydrogens this would have if it were saturated. So this is effective hydrogens now. And the number of hydrogens this would have if it were saturated would be 10 and we get that from CnH2n plus 2 and that would be saturated hydrogens right there. So this here down here would be saturated hydrogens as well. And that would be 10. So the formula we come up with for the double bond equivalence is going to be if uh, saturated hydrogens minus effective hydrogens divided by 2, which will be 10 minus 6 divided by 2, which would be 2. So this compound would have two double bond equivalents. Right, let's look at another example. The effect of nitrogen in a, in a compound like this is that it will cause you to have to subtract one hydrogen. I'm not going to, to go into the mechanics of all of that, but if you had a compound like C5H5N and you want to figure out the number of double bond equivalents, what you would do is you would first of all figure out how many hydrogens it would have if the nitrogen was not present and that would be C5H4 so this would be the effective hydrogens right here and then we'd figure out how many hydrogens it would have if it was saturated and that would be C5H12 5 times 2 plus 2 equals 12 and this becomes the saturated hydrogens right here. So the formula again for double bond equivalence is equal to saturated hydrogens minus effective hydrogens divided by 2 
which is going to be 12 minus 4 divided by 2, which equals 4, double bond equivalents. All right, let's take a look at what happens if we add oxygen into a compound. Say C6H6O. So what we would be looking at here is, first of all, we would figure out what effect oxygen has. Now, since oxygen is, has two bonds, it can actually go in anywhere in a compound, and it actually doesn't affect the effective number of hydrogens we, we are dealing with. Effectively, what oxygen does, we just ignore it. And so we just make it C6H6 is what we would do there. Then we would figure out, so it would be our effective hydrogens. Then we'd figure out what it would be if it was saturated, and it would be C6H14. And we get that by doing 6 times 2 plus 2 equals 14 for CNH 2N plus 2. So that's your saturated hydrogens right there. Saturated hydrogens are always based on the number of carbons you have. So double bond equivalents, 14 minus 6 divided by 2. So this number minus this number divided by 2, which gives you four double bond equivalents. Okay, let me take this opportunity also to say that when you have four double bond equivalents present, four or more present, then I think you've really got to be thinking about the presence of an aromatic ring. The reason we say that is because aromatic rings actually take up four double bond equivalents. They've got three double bonds and the ring, which, are, which actually makes up for four double bond equivalents. Let's say you had five double bond equivalents. Five double bonds would probably mean you had a ring. Five double bond equivalents would mean a ring, aromatic ring, like this, with the ring and the three double bonds, plus one double bond or ring somewhere on the outside of this compound. Alright, so if we go on now we take a look at the examples. You can see that these are the examples. We've got, you've got C4H8O2. Oxygen doesn't have any effect on the calculation, so the effective hydrogens become 8. The saturated hydrogens become 10. That would be 4 times 2 plus 2 equals 10. The double bond equivalents, saturated minus effective hydrogens divided by 2, 10 minus 8 divided by 2 equals 1. So this would have one double bond equivalent in the compound. So this would have one ring or one double bond present. C6H4Cl2. What we're looking at is the effective number of hydrogens, 4 plus 2 equals 6. So this would be C6H6. Number of um, saturated, 6 times 2 plus 2 equals 14. 14 minus 6 divided by 2 equals 4 double bond equivalents. This one, C5H5N. Take off one hydrogen for each nitrogen present, C5H4. Saturated, 5 times 2 plus 2 equals 12. 12 minus 4 divided by 2 equals 4, so this would have 4 double bond equivalents as well.